This is CBT News special coverage of the 2023 NADA show. Hi everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick with CBT News. We're reporting right here from our stage at the NADA convention 2023, I might add, in Dallas, Texas. We're joined by Jonathan Dawson, the founder of Cellcology and host of Mind Your Own Business on the CBT Automotive Network. So welcome in, Jonathan. Well, glad to be here as always, Jim. Thank you and the CBT team. Uh, wonderful setup. And, and this is your first time having a formal setup. To have, yes. This is the first. A standalone CBT that's exactly setup. exactly right. Uh, talk to us about what's going on right now, because as you, you, you've got hundreds of clients all over the country that you're working with, right now training is at the forefront of every dealer's mind because those inventory yes. levels are starting to come back in. Gross profits are starting to dip a little the bit. The margin compression. Margin compression. That's the fancy that's way of exactly saying it. exactly right. And we're seeing now dealers going, hey, wait a minute. My salespeople might have forgotten how to sell these products. So I'm going to let you pick it up there. Is that, oh, is it's, that, are it's you beyond forgotten. It's like a, some form of amnesia. It's, a, it's like they were in a coma. So <laughs> it's challenging. So literally, I just uh, I, I was fortunate enough, an auto group here out of Texas, an eight-store auto group, just signed up with Socology a couple days ago. Okay. I asked them, which I typically ask, once a dealer commits, I say, hey, tell me why. Right. And I, I ask, why me, why now, why not do it yourself? Sure. Right? Yeah. And Fair he enough. said right out the gate, he said, John, um, it's not just why now, we're late to the party. We probably should have done this at least six months ago. Yeah. Because two months ago, we started to see the shifting. Right. And we didn't do it then. Right. And we should have been proactive before it started to shift. So the reality is, uh, yes, the, the margin compression, inventory is returning, customers are becoming more uh, you know, picky. Uh, sales teams are, are, are really struggling. I, another uh, dealership, again, that recently signed up, he said, John, my top guy made 25,000 a month last year. Oh my gosh. The last two months has made seven grand. So he is literally coming to us every day going, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know. How do I get my own customers? How do I get people in the door? Like, sure. what do I, he's panicking right. and he's their top guy panicking. And so like, we're afraid of the attrition. We're afraid of the turnover. We're afraid of what's happening to our team without right. any direction, without any clear, you know, uh, strategy. So Obviously, on my side, my goal, my contribution is, of course, to try to answer those questions, is to give them the strategies to have control over their flow of traffic, control over their flow of day, right. so that they are uh, not dependent on the randomness of the marketplace. That's right. And you can't solve it for everybody. I'm not, a, I'm not gonna claim that I can. So, but the reality is, on your team, on any one team, any dealer's team, there's much, much more that they can control for. That's right. And that's the part that they need to focus on. They can't determine what the Fed's gonna do for the interest rates. They can't determine right. what the politicians are gonna do with policies. But what they can control for is their daily activities, their daily behaviors, yeah. their daily focus, and helping them be effective in that, right. in the right strategies. So that's of course where, where we're beating that drum, but we've been beating that drum I know. since before COVID I know. and during COVID. That's right. Warning dealers that if you take your foot off the gas when it comes to developing your people and training your people, right. you will let your team lower their standards right. for um, for the customer experience. Is it fair to say that there's enough blame to go around here because it's the dealer, I think, that took their foot off of the focus of training because sure. we can't, we get in every car, we're going to sell every car. Yep. Then the GM, GSM, that yep. level, sales yep. managers, yep. they're not sales training right now no. because they're, or you they don't weren't. Because you don't have to. What are we in training yep. for? And then it's the salespeople that pick up on that and yeah, say, oh, not a top priority? Okay, no, we're just clearly. gonna. So now, to your point, now they've been out of the game for the last two years. Yeah. And now it's a pro now it's going to be a problem retrofitting and getting those people oh, yeah. back into training. So here's the thing: I, I was talking to another gentleman. He's in our space. He's a he's a trainer. Right. Uh, well respected, great guy. He said uh, he said John, I was talking to a dealership, and I felt like I was walking into the store thinking like, okay, I got to start over with like, here's a ball. Right. Here's shoes. <laughs> like lace your shoes. Here's how you hold the ball. Like. He felt like I was like a coach coaching like little kids at a little league. Right. Like explaining to salespeople why they should do a TO, explaining yeah. to salespeople why they should do a walk around, wow. explaining to salespeople why they should do a needs analysis at all. Oh why gosh. you don't just greet a customer and immediately just walk out and start showing them stuff yeah. and yeah. then just going back to the desk with numbers. Sure. Like the fundamentals have been lost. Wow. And in many stores, it's that bad. Right. Now, can, not all can, stores, can but you many. Use, can you still, are those salespeople salvageable or do you have to go with a new sales crew? Well, look, there's some people that I think have been spoiled, and I, I really believe we're going to see a great, the great yeah. attrition of the industry because you have people who have normalized basically mediocrity but right. being paid at the level of mastery. Right. 
so how do you then teach those people that, oh, no, you actually have to become a master to, get, to continue to get paid at that level? <laughs> exactly. That's a really hard thing to do. So yeah. I think there's going to be a big loss that we're going to experience sure, through that. Sure. We're going to have to hire in new people right. who weren't weren't part of that experience. Right. Uh, but but, but I do think there's salvageability. Of course. And there's opportunity in that, right? Of course, because always is. For sales, I mean, for dealers out there that bring on another generation of salespeople and say, okay, the, the next five years are not going to be like the last three years. And there's an opportunity there to train the people that yeah. that the way that you want them to be trained. But there's also there's also another side of the opportunity, which is that most dealers are apathetic because they're kind of so right. rich and fat right. and happy, and right. you know the, the the problem is they don't care because right. they're they're in the days still. Sure. So they're not paying attention. So the great news is, if you're paying attention, your competitors probably not. Right. If you're concerned, they're probably not. That's a good point. So the opportunity yeah. always lies in being proactive yeah. and saying, well, all right, I'm not really going to worry about all those other things. I'm going to look at my team right now and go, okay, these are the people that currently work for me. What am I going to do to make sure I develop the best out of them to right. get the best customer experience, to take away market share from the people who are going to be lazy sure. or apathetic? And then as we recruit and hire new people, putting in processes, like I was sharing with some of my new, again, new stores that just onboarded with me, I said in my platform, just again specifically to my platform, my platform allows for the dealers to integrate internal onboarding modules and, 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 and content into the platform. Right. So as I was walking through the examples of what that looks like and showing them, you hire a new person and here's an entire series of how to log a customer in the CRM, how to log a key in the system, how do you go to the desk with first numbers, what do you do when you're stocking in a trade? Systematizing and bringing structure to the onboarding process so right. that it's consistent. Because here's the sad stereotype, Jim. Salesperson's been on the floor for a week, comes up to the desk and says, um, customer's asking this, well, are they in the CRM yet? No one showed me how to do that. You've been here for a week and you don't know how to put a customer in the CRM yet? Like that's the stereotype. <laughs> that's right. There's not a consistent, most dealers, I'd ask any dealer, how consistent structured is your onboarding process? How consistent is the messaging? How consistent is the structure of the messaging? Is it timeline? Is there accountability? The answer sadly is in most stores, there's none. Right. Most stores, there's none. Right. So if you're going to be recruiting this next generation, let's do them the service yeah. of bringing them in properly yeah. so that they don't come in and bounce out. And That's then we right. have the turnover that we had historically before COVID. So two questions to follow up on that, because I agree with you totally. A, who does it in the dealership? And B, is that person trained to do that in the dealership? Well, so the great news, specifically when it comes to systemiz systemization is, if you're talking about the onboarding process, you can take, and, and of course we help our dealers do this, but you can take and like come up with the 15 internal things that are consistent with bringing somebody into Dawson Motors. Yeah. Then that can be videotaped literally from an iPhone if you want to, okay. but it can be videotaped, structured, put into the platform, assigned to the new person, even as part of their HR onboarding right. while waiting for screening to happen. Right. Hey, go, go, go through this material. So then there's always the consistency of the messaging happening that way. Who's delivering it? It could be, your, again, your finance manager talking about how to do a proper finance okay. TO. The used car manager. Those, those, those people, those individuals, yeah. they need some training in that area, yeah. right? Because well, well, sure, to they, know it and to train to it is two different things, right? Fair enough, yes. Yeah. And that's why obviously, again, on our side, what we yeah. try to do is help them right. through that process right. of this is, here's a model, here's a template, here's what that looks like, right. model this and do this at your store. Right. Um, that's the thing we want, we want to try to do, but look, the reality is management needs training, uh, middle management needs training, finance. Now, you know this, and many maybe of your viewers know this, at the Pinnacle Training Center in Atlanta, right yep. down the road from CBT right. headquarters, right. we have finance training, service advisor right. training, service manager training, middle management training, GSM training. We provide those so that we give that structure and infrastructure, because everybody, right now, we're, we're, we're past the, the wave. We've rode the yep. wave. Now, who's going who's gonna to create their own wave? Yeah. Because it's going to come crashing on some, That's right. and others are going to create and ride their That's next right. wave themselves. That's so right. That's right. you've got to be proactive in this market. There's no, there's no question about it. And for dealers that are watching, you know, uh, many people in the industry, we've heard this line before, you've got to fix the roof while the sun is shining. Of right? course. And that, 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 maybe that needs to be right now, okay? So take a look around your dealership, do yeah. a little survey on your own, find out what you've got in the way of talent, Find out who's staying, who's going to you know, yeah. stay with you, who's going to leave, who needs to leave yeah. maybe. Because as you know, you can get a loud mouth on a showroom floor yes. that says, oh my God, I went from 25 grand down to seven. This place is good. Poisoning the rest They got to go. Okay? Yes. And it's going to hurt your training efforts and keeping that together. And I would say but, to your saying about the 
fix the roof while the sun's shining. I see clouds on the distance. <laughs> yes. I you see, better hurry I, up and fix it. Is that thunder I hear? That's right. The, so don't wait until it's don't raining. Wait. Don't there, wait. There's no question about it. Jonathan Dawson, founder of Cellcology, one of the fastest growing, most comprehensive sales training companies out there that dealers can use and also host the Mind Your Own Business on CBT. Thank you for all that you do for CBT. We very much appreciate it. And I appreciate yep, it. Absolutely. So uh, hopefully we can do a follow-up after NADA to yeah. see how things are moving. Fantastic. Let's Great. do it. Thanks for watching our special coverage of the 2023 NADA show. CBT News, celebrating 10 years of delivering the news and content automotive professionals count on. CBT News, 10 years strong. Subscribe today.